Easy. We've been given a very stark warning this week, although if you live in the south of England, you will probably not be aware. But in the north of England, uh, particularly uh, the northeast, Cumbria and parts of Scotland, having been almost a week now since Storm Arwen, there are many thousands of homes that are still without power. Uh, because during the storm there were power lines brought down, sometimes there were trees that fell onto the power lines. And when something like that happens, it's very difficult to get things back up and running quickly. Uh, I know that um, you tend to get fury directed towards the engineers doing the work, but they've got a very difficult task to do. Now, it's gone rather unnoticed on uh, mainstream news, apart from the local news. And I can tell you right now, if this shit were happening in the south or in London, it would be absolute wall-to-wall -wall coverage, and it would be it would be completely unacceptable that people should be without power for this length of time. There's been reports that uh, some houses might not get back on the grid until Christmas. But this warning basically is now a warning to us all as to what happens should we have to rely on electricity for everything in our lives. Electricity is becoming more and more the dominant form of power and this shows why it's important to have alternative sources. Now reports are coming in that a bloke in his 80s has died in his own home due to hypothermia because he was unable to get power. There have also been reports of people um, unable to call for help and just general things like that. Now I know that my my house, the the boiler, the gas boiler, when the power goes off, the boiler doesn't work. I found that out the hard way. Because when we had a power cut a good few years ago, it was not due to the weather. It was like a, the whole area that was uh, where the, there was a, a, a power cut. And you, it was dark. It was actually over the Christmas holiday and it, it happened about three in the afternoon and it was it got dark very quickly and you just couldn't do anything. You couldn't cook, you couldn't eat, you couldn't stay warm. And uh, I thought to myself, in my wisdom, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll get in the bath and have a nice warm bath and stay warm. So I went into the bathroom, of course, I couldn't see the bath because it was pitch black. So I set the tap going and I thought, I'll, I'll use my hand like that to uh, to, to uh, assess when it's deep enough. So I set the tap running, ran it for about five minutes, went back into the bathroom put my hand in the bath, and of course the bath was ice cold, wasn't it? So I had to abandon that. So the boiler doesn't even work without power. My landline doesn't work without power. You can't charge your phones up without power. You can't heat your homes because, you know, in like in, in older days when you would have a coal fire where you could at least stay warm, you might have a wood burner where you can stay warm. You've probably got a landline that doesn't need electricity. So that means that you can at least call for help and you can report the problem. And I've now heard a tale of uh, people who can't call for help and what they've been having to do is because they can't charge the mobile phones, they've been having to get into their cars, start their cars up, plug their phones into the cigarette lighter to charge the phones. Now I'm assuming that those cars that they use will be petrol or diesel powered cars. You get where I'm going with this? So eventually when... Gas boilers are banned. When petrol and diesel cars are banned, coal fires have already been banned. It's not long. They're trying to ban wood burners now. That's coming down the line, is that? So you see what where we are. The removal of alternative sources of power will cost lives. People will die. An 80-year-old man dying in his own home because he couldn't stay warm. This is unacceptable in 2021. And this is why we need these uh, these alter... I mean, particularly for transport, at least... If you couldn't get... At least if you couldn't call for help, you could possibly drive for help. You could go somewhere to get help to report it. Uh, the Tan Hilling, you may have heard uh, in, in this week, that the Tan Hilling in North Yorkshire has been in the news because a group of people uh, that went there on Friday, they got stranded there because of high winds and, and drifting snow. Now, the Tan Hill Inn, I know it very well. I've been there a number of times. I've cycled past it on that road, past it countless times. It's very much isolated in the North Yorkshire Moors. 
not not the North Yorkshire Moors on the east coast. I mean the the Dales in the northern end of the Dales. And it's at least five miles away from the nearest other property. And it's not connected to the national grid, which means for power, it has its own generator, which I'm assuming runs on diesel. And the people that were stranded there, they were better off than everybody else because they, they, could, they could eat, they could stay warm, they could drink beer, they could have power to all the other electric things. Uh, you know, the, the, the beer pumps will be able to work. Everything, they were able to work everything. So this is why it's important. Something like a diesel generator will solve all the problems should the power grid go off. A lesson for you all. Nobody ever thought of this. Love it, your MPs. Tell them that this is unacceptable. We must not remove alternative sources of home power and more importantly, petrol and diesel cars must never, ever be banned. Thanks for watching. Until next time, easy.